So hi, for anyone who missed it before, I'm Roz. I'm the Global Director for Research and Open Access at Bloomsbury, and I'm going to give you an update on Bloomsbury Open Collections, which is our collective action subscribed to open type OA model for scholarly books. Essentially, we're trying to make monographs available open access at no cost to the author by asking libraries instead to contribute to those costs. Libraries that participate get one year's access to more than 150 related backlist titles and a guarantee of permanent access to any frontlist titles in the event that we don't raise enough funds to make all of them open access. Uh, we've been running a pilot which we kicked off last year uh, with the aim of making 20 frontlist titles in African studies and international development open access. So we were raising funds over the course of last year with the titles due to publish this year. In setting this up, Ultimately, our aim was to offer an equitable alternative to the BPC, which is to say the OAC model. Um, so we feel that we do use the BPC model, we continue to do so, um, but we know that only a small number of authors are ever going to be able to publish their books open access through that model because most humanities and social sciences authors don't have research grants. Um, so part of our motivation was simply we wanted to be able to publish a greater proportion of our books open access and we knew we needed to look to other approaches to do that. We also wanted to ensure that a more diverse range of authors could benefit from open access for their scholarly books because at the moment it's the authors at the richest institutions and those with access to large research grants for publishing OA. In specifically focusing our pilot on African studies and international development, we really wanted to increase local access to that region specific content. We know that for our authors who are, say, from African countries, it is particularly important that their institutions are able to access the research that they are publishing. Making it open access guarantees that. We know that for institutions in the global north, many are looking to diversify, to decolonialize their curriculum. By making content on this subject open access, we can support those aims. So as I've said, we were raising funds over the course of last year and then we're due to publish the books this year. What did we learn? Our authors really loved it, they were pretty much universally supportive, keen to take part when we said we wanted to put their book into the programme. But we did find that in launching this programme on authors who otherwise hadn't considered open access because it wasn't an option, actually some of those authors were less familiar with open access. And so we were having those conversations that we were more used to having a few years ago, just explaining from ground up what it was and what it would mean for their book, that it wouldn't mean that they didn't get a print edition, for example. We found that institutions, our customers, really liked the focus on equity, but there was a really wide range in how ready they were to participate. Some already had criteria in place. They had established working groups so that their open access teams and their ebook acquisitions teams were talking to each other and they knew straight away, yes, this is something we want to participate in or we have some questions um, and can you can guarantee these things before we decide whether to participate. For some, it was uh, many months of decision making where they went back and forth between um, departments within the library before they could make that decision and some didn't get there by the end of the cutoff. Consortia played a really important role. We partnered with Lyricist in the US and with JISC in the UK, and um, they each brought in at least 10 institutions each. For us at Bloomsbury, I think anything to do with open access or any of these sorts of big changes, you have to think across your organization. It's not just the systems, it's not just looking at each different department, it's actually a cultural change, thinking about who are we as a publisher, what are our aims, how does this fit into this? Um, but I do think it was really worth all of that to make our open access program more inclusive. And that's something that has been really celebrated, particularly by our editorial team, who I know had real concerns before that about the fee model being our only route to open access publication. So I've saved the, the um, hook for last, but where did we land? So I said we were aiming to make 20 books available open access. We actually achieved 50% of our funding target. So this was not an unqualified success. But we will still be making 10 of those books open access at no cost to the author. There are 58 authors involved in those books because some of them are edited collections. 17 of those authors are based in the Global South. So we are enabling authors who otherwise would have had no route when publishing with Bloomsbury to go open access to make their books um, fully open access immediately on publication. And we are also committing to the Bloomsbury Open Collections program. We don't think that the wider landscape is in any way ready for us to flip our entire 
um, set of monographs that we publish annually um, to open access through this model. We're too big for that at this point, but we will be announcing new open collections in a couple of weeks time. And we will have a continued focus on trying to support authors from underrepresented groups and subjects that we think there's an ethical imperative to increase access to the research. Um, you can find out more on our website if you want to discuss participating, you can get in touch with the relevant teams. And if you've got any other questions, please send them to me. Thanks.